Good morning, everyone. Glad everyone could make it out. I know it's a little tricky navigating the uh, Chinatown uh, community here with uh, the parade and everything that's going on for Chinese New Year. But uh, thank you for coming out and waking up probably a little bit early this morning in order to do that. Well, this morning we want to, uh, we want to acknowledge the grace of God in our lives. Uh, I've heard somebody say before, apart from the grace of God, there go I. Um, it, all they mean to say is that um, we're, we're pretty much all equal. None of us has anything to boast in, in and of ourselves. So it's all because of the grace of God and the mercy of God. Uh, it says in the scripture, because of the Lord's mercies, that we are not consumed. So when we, when we come this morning, we come reverently and, and we come with expectation and just waiting for God to come here and meet us in his presence with his grace to empower us to live the Christian life, right? Because we can't do it on our own. It's Jesus living in us that empowers us to, to live the Christian life and the, and the grace of the gospel and the power of the Spirit in us. So um, this morning we want, to, we want to sing songs that reflect that. So this morning if you would just stand up and let's join our voices together as we sing. Praise is rising. Oh, 
welcome God into our presence and in his presence is fullness of joy. So let's continue our worship as we sing, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. us to the joy divine all right let's take it up here mortals join the happy chorus which the morning songs began father love is reigning o'er us brother love binds man to man Singing, march we onward, makers in the midst of strife. Joyful music lifts us upward in the triumph song of life. Great singing, you may be seated. all because of the grace of God that we are here today and that we get to worship freely out of the abundance of the grace that he has poured into us. And so we want to, we want to acknowledge God for his grace this morning, his amazing grace that's powerful enough to transform our lives. It doesn't happen immediately, right? It doesn't happen. So if your expectation is that God's just going to whammo, <laughs> and, and something magical is going to happen. No, it's not magic, but it is the power of the Spirit, and He changes us, not from the outside in, but from the inside out, so that the change is real and abiding. It's lasting, it's, and we own it. We own that change and as we are conformed into the image of Christ, and our chains begin to fall off. Our chains, all right? I know we all come with chains, various chains that we're going through, but God in his amazing grace is, and his patience and his long suffering and his perseverance has stuck with us and will stick with us to the end um, because of his amazing grace. So let's sing together, amazing grace, my chains are gone. Let's sing together. 
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now. was grace. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good. our testimony. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing Pastor Tim. Good morning, everyone. Uh, at this time, we will go ahead and uh, dismiss our children. Thank you for staying and singing with us. I'm uh, actually not supposed to be here today. <laughs> Uh, I was originally supposed to be with the uh, high schoolers as they are on their uh, snow trip today, uh, but uh, due to uh, my wife Christina's accident, uh, we stayed home. But it is uh, such a joy to be here today, um, not only because I don't have to preach. <laughs> today we have uh, Pastor WK, who is uh, a longtime uh, CIBC uh, uh, you, you, you have a long history with CIBC, shall we say, and he will be bringing the word to us today. Uh, so I get to sit and enjoy and be ministered to. Uh, but also, uh, it is a, a day, as you know from the parking, uh, the, it is the Chinese New Year uh, parade uh, that will be going on, and uh, we're looking forward to that. Um, yet, as we uh, look at you know, as the, the, the thoughts of Chinese New Year have been here and as we've been uh, celebrating, no doubt you've celebrated uh, yourselves, uh, we can't help but notice that uh, 
man, there's not a lot to celebrate uh, in these times, it seems. Uh, just even uh, Lunar New Year, Chinese New Year has been marred by, by tragedies, by, uh, by, by shootings, by uh, you know, the reports of, uh, of police brutality, by just upheaval around the world and, and, and wars around the world. My thought today as we uh, prepare our hearts for, uh, for the pastoral prayer, uh, I, I find myself turning to Jeremiah chapter 3. Now, uh, as some of you may notice, I have my iPad, and I've been big on telling you to bring your physical Bibles. So, mea culpa, I left my Bible upstairs, and I didn't have a chance to go and get it, uh, but it is here. <laughs> so, so, before anyone says, well, you know, Pastor Tim, practice what you preach, I, I fully intend to, and I understand that accidents happen. But, Back to Jeremiah, uh, Lamentations chapter 3. In, in perhaps one of the, the darkest books of the Bible, it is called Lamentations for a good reason. The Lamentations of the prophet Jeremiah in chapter 3, in the very middle, in the heart of this book, there's a passage that many of us are familiar with. There's a passage that songs have been written about, and that is Lamentations 3, verses 22 to 23. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. As Eric reminded us of the grace and the mercy of God, I think there's a specific reason why we need the reminder that the mercies of God are new every morning. Because we don't know what trials and tribulations and tragedies that each new morning may hold, each new week, each new month, each new year, but the constant that we hold up to, or we hold on to, is that our circumstances may change, but the love and mercy of the Lord is steadfast, and they are new for us every morning. So it is with that thought in mind, I invite you, as we, uh, as we uh, ask the Lord for his blessing, and, ask and reflect on the grace of the Lord in our lives uh, as we pray. Father God, Lord, we do thank you for another year. We thank you for new beginnings. We thank you for everything that this year has in store for us. And yet we also know that there are countless tragedies, big and small, that happen every day. And Lord, as we look at this world in the direction that it's headed in, we cannot help but say, come, Lord Jesus. For while we may not see an end to the strife here on this earth, we know that ultimately there will be an end. We know that ultimately when Christ returns, ultimately when we are ushered into eternity, there will be no more tears and there will be no more pain. But we know how the story ends, and yet as we look around us, we have much to, there's much that can cause us to fear and to doubt. So Lord, we cling to the words that you wrote down for us through your prophet Jeremiah, so that your steadfast love never ceases, and your mercies never come to an end, and that they are new every morning. Lord, I pray for each individual here. And for us, indeed, as a church, Lord, that whatever each new day brings our way, both good or bad, Lord, that we are finding our refuge and our hope in your unchanging character, in your amazing grace, in your steadfast love, and in your new mercies. So, Lord, today, as we have the privilege of hearing uh, W.K. share with us your word, may you prepare our hearts to not just understand what you have to say to us, but Lord, be convicted by your word so that we change and we grow more into the likeness of Christ. And it is in his name we pray. Amen. WK? Good. Good morning. Let's see if the lapel works. Can you hear me? All right. Oh, yeah, I hear myself. Scary. I brought my Bible. Yeah. Just a, uh, you know, spite. <laughs> Positive. Uh, well, it's uh, been a while. Um, it's an honor to be back here. Uh, I have a lot of history with CIBC. It's my first church that I came to 
after I rededicated my, Lord, uh, my life to the Lord in 2001. Uh, it's the church that allowed me to um, understand and fall into a deeper love with God. It's the church that engaged culture and, and, and help and, and, and just breed a heart to help others know Christ more. It's the church where my wife, Diana, grew up as a VBS child. Uh, it's the church where she grew up, grew and into a, a, a God-loving woman. It's actually the church where we met, where I met this God-loving woman. <laughs> and it's actually the church where we walked down the aisles and said, I do. Uh, so we have a lot of history here. Um, and it's, CI always has a special place in my heart. But then um, I'm honored and privileged to be able to bring the word to you today. And, um, but bear with me, I haven't preached since April 2018. So that's like four years ago. And that was for the youth camp for CIBC. Um, so, and, my, and now I have two kids, so it's like my brain is a lot slower and there's a lot more noise in the house, so focus is slim. Um, and yeah, after I speak in the, uh, April 2018 at the CIBC Youth Retreat, I never got asked back. I, I don't know why. I would like to say it's COVID, and I tell myself that it's COVID, but I don't know. But let us pray uh, before we start. Can I pray for us? Father, we just come before you. Uh, we're here. We're listening. Uh, speak to us through your spirit. We pray that we will recognize and hear your word uh, and your word alone, Lord. May you continue to work in our hearts so that we can be vessels uh, of sharing your gospel with others around us. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Uh, speaking of COVID, it's been three years, a little past three years. January 21st, 2020 was when the first case entered the United States, a firm first confirmed case in Washington State. It's been a little over three years since COVID happened. And finally, things are returning back to normal. Well, at least a new norm, right? And I don't know if you've taken a survey for the previous three years of your life where you, kind of COVID happened. Um, some of your hobbies might have changed. Your work might have changed. Your interests, priorities, even your personality has probably changed and just many different areas of your life that you might still be working through uh, what these changes are. I feel like one key component that most have in, um, experienced during the change is isolation. Uh, I don't think it's just me. I think everybody felt isolated. I mean, we had to stay in our homes. None of the parks were open, and we just basically kept to ourselves for a long period of time. It wasn't until the past year, 2022, this past year, that our family actually started like, our, not just our immediate family, our extended family started to meet together indoors. For the longest time, we were still meeting outdoors because we're like, oh, um, you know, just be kosher and, you know, we don't want to spread germs, we want to be outdoors. So we started meeting indoors this year, which is a big change because we got more close contact and you felt closer to people as you meet them in, indoors. A little over a year and a half ago, in June 20th, 20, 20, 20, 21st, I was ecstatic to be back at our church because we actually came back full swing with children program so I could just send my kids to, 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 to over there so I could be in the sanctuary without them. And you know how it is with young kids. I have a five-year-old and a three-year-old, so it's they're, 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 they're nice. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a joyous moment for me, uh, being able to corporately worship with other brothers and sisters. I remember the awkward moments uh, when I would come into church, and there were people with masks, and we had our mask on, and we would come in, and, I was, and they would say hi to me, and then for a second, I'd be like, I, I don't recognize who you are. But then I recognized them, but I couldn't remember their names. Like, I hadn't seen them for so long that I just, it just blanked. And that was an awkward moment, but we got through that, and... Um, and, and we spent a lot of time rekindling uh, of friendships that were kind of just have fallen apart through the isolation. Um, COVID is partly to blame, but of course, there are other things that uh, we see happening in there. 
Uh, and as we started coming back to church, we were connecting with the church body, and, they, and then there are still some that haven't come back, and they're still online, and that's okay. They have their reasons, and we, and we honor that. But at the same time, maybe they just need an invitation from you to come back. So uh, churches as a whole have suffered. COVID certainly did a number on the church body as a whole. Even as the church has started to piece back together all the worship, the fellowshipping, the different programs to help believers come to God, as well as, you know, uh, 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 love others, uh, there's sort of a part of the equation that seems to be trailing and missing from our church movement. And we believers are so busy catching up that, and caring for others that the desire to make disciples seems to have been put on the back burner. Uh, we don't always address, oh, we need to invite people in. We need to go out and, and actually talk to non, non-believers. That seems to be the trend I'm seeing. I remember stepping back into the church in Father's Day, 2021, 2021, and the whole focus was, for me at least, was to get back what COVID stole from me. I felt like COVID stole relationships, just, uh, uh, just connections that I had with people. Even my relationship with God felt like it was bro- I was robbed of something. And I spent a lot of time reconnecting with those con- relationships as well as my, my, my connection with God. And it wasn't until mid-August of last year that I got snapped out of it. Why? Because Wyatt started attending, Wyatt or Elder started attending transitional kindergarten in, in uh, public school. It was then I actually started interacting with people outside of the church, really, uh, for the first time. Uh, not like, you know, going to the grocery store, but actually sat down and had conversations with a non-believer. It was then that I realized, wow, I've just been selfish. I've just been focused on myself, trying to gain back what I've lost through COVID. And I haven't had any focus on anybody else outside of my church body and myself. So it begs the question, as this new year starts, how do we posture ourselves to reignite our call as disciples to engage culture? How do we posture ourselves to reignite our call as disciples to engage culture as the masks start to come down further? Are we, as individuals of the body of Christ, postured to engage in a manner that reflects the grace and love of God? Today, we're going to be looking at a passage that I didn't intend to preach on. Uh, I was working through a passage in Acts, and then I felt the Holy Spirit convicting me uh, to this certain passage, which happens to be one of my life verses. So I'm not really mad about that. Uh, so we're going to be, oh, I completely forgot to click on the thing. See, this is when you have too many things to do. Uh, ordinary people, extraordinary grace. Um, so we're going to be in this passage, Romans 12, uh, verses 1 to 2. A very familiar passage, I believe, for everybody. And if you would stand, uh, I would like to read this. And if, you would, if you're able to, can you stand with me as I read this passage? Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Thank you. You may have a seat. Today, we'll look at what, what, what or how we can help posture ourselves to engage culture. First thing is marvel at God's grace. The text is Romans 12, verse 1. It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers... In view, uh, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. This verse has hit me a little differently in different stages of my Christianity walk. When I first dedicated my life to the Lord, I read this verse and I immediately jumped to the latter half. Let's pull that up again. I immediately jumped to the latter half where it says, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. And at that time, I wasn't wrong. Because during that season of my life, I just rededicated my life to the Lord. I had lost Christ for a long time, living in darkness. 
And when I was hit that night with the grace of God, I had nothing else to hold on to but to understand and grasp just how deep uh, God's grace for me was in, in my life. And I was on fire for God. So I held on to, well, I was already on fire for God. So I, all I need, uh, what I need to do is to offer my body as a living sacrifice. I need to go out there. I need to be in the church. I need to go out there and just to invest in people and to, and to, and to worship God. And I've gone through many, um, with that mindset, I had literally no desire then to act in response to that love and grace. Those were my early years where I basically lived here. Every Friday night, every, mo- every time the church was open to the public, I was basically here. I was here Friday night for fellowship, Saturday morning for English, uh, for middle school tutoring, then middle school, uh, uh, um, middle, middle school I, was, I was one of the coaches for middle school uh, fellowship, <laughs> blank it out, middle school fellowship with actually Kitty and Hebron. Are they here? They're not here. Uh, yeah, with Kitty and, Kitty and Hebron. And, um, and then I stayed after to hang out with the kids. And then Sunday, we would come to church, and then I would, would help out with youth worship, and then we would have all these meetings for, you know, Friday fellowship and all that stuff. So I basically lived at the church. At one time, I was even a janitor. So I was, like, cleaning bathrooms when nobody was here. Uh, loved, loved it, I think. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that was a different stage in my life. And as Christianity gets, kind of sets in, life gets a little more complicated. It gets a little more complex the fire inside seemed to not burn as hot. And that's the reality. We lose a lot of the fervor that we have in our first love. And we get spurts of, you know, uh, spurts of it. We, we were reminded with grace every so often. But every, in everyday life, we kind of just operate forgetting about it a lot of times. And it's kind of the church in, um, in, in Revelations where, where, where they're dressed as the church that lost their first love, the church of Ephesus in Revelations 2.4. It's more in recent years that I've been graced once again to reflect more on the therefore of this passage. If you read the passage again, it says, Therefore I urge you, sisters, in view of God's mercy. So the therefore points us back, actually, to the beginning of, the Re- of Romans, right, of the book of Romans, from chapters 1 to verse 11. That's where it brings us. It reflects us to just the, 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 the depravity of our sin and just the grace of God uh, saving us. And that allowed me to see the, just the fullness of my brokenness and the depths of God's grace. The prerequisite, if you will, to being fully, uh, to fully offer ourselves to sac- and sacrifice to God is to understand what that grace is, our everythingness in Him in all aspects of our life. The marvel of His grace. I think we understand this. We understand that our hearts are easily turned and lose fervor. I see it like this. I see it as. When you first get your iPhone, remember that first time you got your new iPhone? Or maybe you just got a new iPhone. You, you baby that bait. You baby it. You put on a new case. You got a glass screen protector. And you got this microfiber. I don't have I forgot my microfiber cloth. You get a microfiber cloth, first day of owning it, and you put it down. And when you put down your phone, you're like this, with two hands. And you're like, OK. Three months of owning an iPhone, you still care for it. And you, you, you don't gingerly put it down anymore. You kind of like just you know, when you're done with it. And you, you don't wipe it with a microfiber cloth. You kind of just like do that. You still care for it. Six months of owning an iPhone. What are you doing? You're doom scrolling, doom scrolling through Mac rumors looking for the specs of the new iPhone, the next one. It's already lost its fervor. And what happens one year of owning an iPhone? Well, for a lot of us, there's no one year. We've already pre-ordered the next one, and it's coming in the mail. So things like that just lose its fervor. And if you compare it and look at it with our grace, with our understanding of grace, sometimes it's like that too. We lose sight of what, how God's grace is for us in our everyday lives. We move in such a fast-paced world that we easily overlook the daily basis, the, the daily blessings that have been bestowed upon us by God. We're so self-righteous sometimes that we even say that 
we deserve these things. We deserve these blessings. And we completely forgot that we don't deserve any of it. And God just blesses us. We simply lose sight of his grace. If there's one good thing that COVID has brought, I think it's the ability for it to put bricks in our, on our lives and it stopped us on the tracks. We basically had to adjust to everything. And I was thankful. I was thankful that our kids were not, hasn't, hadn't really started school yet because I heard that was tough. Like people with kids in school and they were all home. Everybody started working from home. The kids were studying from home and then going online and that was tough. And I didn't have it as tough as that, but it was still tough for me because Diana was an essential worker. She still had to go to the hospital. So I was at home with two kids uh, by myself and it was hard. I had a hard time, I had a lot of frustration, a lot of anger surfaced uh, that I didn't know that was there. Though I never hit my kids, I've yelled at them numerous times to the point where they're just like sobbing and I'm still yelling at them. My heart was hardened to that. And it wasn't pretty, but at that time, I felt it was, in my heart, justified. It revealed just again the ugliness of my sin, the selfishness just wanting things my way and the lack of patience and love that I had for my kids. You would think that being a Christian for so many years, that things would be better. I would be more sanctified. But it's indeed a journey. We do get closer, as uh, Pastor Eric was saying. We do get closer, but it's not an instantaneous change. But if we examine ourselves, we realize there are deeply rooted sins that we haven't let go of. These these deeply rooted sins are still in us sometimes. But what I've realized during the stop in COVID is it's God's grace and his hand reaching as far down as our sins and meeting us there and forgiving us there. It wasn't just that I was thinking I was doing pretty good as a Christian. It was really truly understanding my brokenness and how God worked through that and forgave that and allowed me the grace to just continue. Jesus told to die for my sins, for those sins of mine and yours, and loves me and calls me his own. When you live with that daily reminder that you don't deserve nor can you earn any of his love for you, it changes your heart posture. It humbles you. I had a recent conversation with Wyatt, which is my eldest, he's five years old. And I asked him one day, uh, my youngest was taking a nap, so I asked him one day, I said, do you, is, good, is daddy a good daddy? He says, yes. And then I asked him, is daddy a bad daddy sometimes? He said, yes. <laughs> but do you, I asked him, but do you still love daddy when daddy's a bad daddy? And he said, yes. At that moment, I, I kind of broke down, sort of like now, not completely. But at that moment, it, it, I broke down not because he loved me. I broke down because I, I got a glimpse of how God sees me. Uh, even in my brokenness, God chooses to love me. And, and, and why, it, why it basically uh, set the tone for that, for me to understand just how, de how deep God's grace was for me, even in all of my failures. So when God's, mercy, when God's mercy for you is in view, you respond in worship because your heart posture changes and you have a transformed heart posture. Romans chapter 12, verse 2a. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, the verb here is conform. It's in the present tense. Uh, present tense means it's continuous. You continually do it, which means you continually, it requires a continual effort to resist conforming to the pattern of this world. The nonconformity isn't just for the trends, but for even the daily accepted social norms. Something that we a lot of times don't, don't think about because everybody enjoys it we might as well. We live in a Bay Area where it's one of the biggest conformities that kind of seeps into our lives without us even realizing it or whether we notice or admit to it is comfort. 
Comfort isn't bad, but when comfort shifts our focus, then it begins to look a lot like an idol that is here to stay. When the comfort just becomes more than our desire for God or our desire to what God has called us to, it seems like it just becomes an idol. Just like the prerequisite of a living sacrifice and worship is to have the understanding of mercy. The prerequisite of not falling into conformity is to be transformed from the inside out through renewal of the mind. This unfortunately is a hard one. Uh, it's a hard one given the fast-paced society we live in. We, live, we jam-pack our schedules. We don't even have time to stop. It's almost like an Amazon delivery driver. They just you know, have to pee wherever they go, sort of. And that's kind of the lifestyle we live in sometimes. And we don't, and, and a lot of times we, even, even our communion with God, our time spent with God trying to understand and, and, and connect with God is rushed. feels rushed a lot of times. And we're just moving on to the next thing. It becomes easy to fall in line with everyone else around you and what they're doing. Christians are not immune to falling in line with what everyone else is doing. Sometimes, our lifestyles are so similar to non-Christians that it seems like the only difference is that we attend church on Sundays. And that, sometimes. But it's, it's so easy to fill our lives with temporal things here on earth and lose sight of the things with eternal value. And I'm guilty of that. I'm not here telling you I'm a saint. I don't do any of that. I'm just as guilty as you are. So a little over a year ago, I joined this group on Facebook called the Buy Nothing Group. And it's a, it's a Buy Nothing Group specifically for the Fremont, Union City, and Newark district where I live in, those three cities. And I, didn't, I, I came upon it by an invitation from a friend because we just bought a house. We were getting ready to move, so I wanted to get rid of some stuff. So I had all this new stuff that I had in the garage that I'd never used. It's still there. Oh, well, actually, not there. I got rid of it. So I posted it on my Facebook wall. Um, nobody wanted my stuff. They were, they were nice stuff, but nobody wanted it. I guess I didn't have enough friends. Um, but this, well, another friend of mine saw it. I was like, oh, you should post it on this buy. You should join this buy nothing group and post it on there. And you will get, they will, it will be gone in seconds. And literally, I posted it on there. It was gone in 60 seconds. They were fast. And... The mentality was quick. So I joined this group of 8,000 members. Most buy nothing groups are not this big, but we have a group of 8,000 members. And this group will um, literally take your half-eaten sandwich. <laughs> they will. And it's not because they're hungry. Well, some of them are hungry. Some of them are hungry. But it's because they have a mindset of not wasting stuff and not wanting everything to be in, ending up in the landfill. So they don't want to up upcycle everything. So people just post stuff. And I have to admit, I wasn't going to say this, but I have to admit, last night, I was on Buy Nothing. It somehow must have been a targeted ad, but it was on the Buy Nothing group, and it just came up. I pulled up Facebook app, and it was there. It was a half-eaten chocolate cake. <laughs> and um, it was four minutes away, and I wanted chocolate cake at that moment. <laughs> so. I commented that I wanted it, and I went over there and got, grabbed it and ate a piece. It's still in my fridge. If you want some, I can give you some. You have to drive to Union City, though. But that, there's, there's not a day that goes by that I don't talk about this buy nothing group because it's pretty much incorporated into a part of my life. The community, this community is actually very generous. Uh, we've seen a lot of nice things given away. Giant TVs, refrigerators, uh, washer and dryers, computers, uh, laptops, um, even Apple Watches. Apple Watch is a pretty nice gift. So the first time I saw an Apple Watch being listed, I was like offered, and this is all free because you, you can't charge anything, so this is all free. So the first time I saw an Apple Watch being offered, I was like, wow. That's a nice gift. Why would somebody give away an Apple Watch? You could just easily sell that thing for like 100 bucks at least. But I didn't need it, so I was like, I don't want it. Let me preface this by saying that I actually don't want an Apple Watch. Actually, I, I covet an Apple Watch, but I don't want an Apple Watch 
because I'm already glued to my phone most of the time. I don't need something strapped to my wrist telling me to go to my phone again. So I refrain from getting an Apple Watch. But when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's nice, but I don't want it. But when the second Apple Watch came up, I said, ooh, that's a generous gift. I don't need it. I saw like 100 people comment, and only one person gets selected and feels like they won the lottery. It wasn't me. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't ask for it. And then a third Apple Watch comes up, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to type something. I said, this is a generous gift. You, you, thanks for giving to the community. So I wanted to encourage the community, or the person, the giver, because I was like, oh, that's a generous gift, and I just want to be encouraging in the group. I kid you not, that same day, a fourth, well, a fourth Apple Watch came up the same day the third one came up, and my immediate thing was, I'm interested. I can pick up any time. And that was my comment. I didn't even want an Apple Watch. But just the, the leeching mentality of the group, you get sucked into it. And next thing you know, you're just like everybody else, conforming to everybody else. And I'm asking for an Apple Watch when I don't even want an Apple Watch. That's the craziness that we live in today. It happens more often than you think. All of that to say conformity is no joke. No one is immune to it, and it happens more often than we think, more often than we know. And the leeching mentality, just the idea of wanting something and beating everybody else to it is high in this group. Uh, as I observe the group and their interactions, that's what they do. They're like, interest they can pick up any time. So that gives free reign for the giver to choose them because they want it out of their house. Most people who are giving stuff just want it out of their house immediately. And most of the time, they don't even have need for the item. They just want the item. However, one day, it hit me that I was one of those praying in the group, praying with the E, P-R-E-Y-I-N-G, not with the A. I was one of those people that wanted to get an item to upgrade my house, to make my life more comfortable. But even long before I actually started joining this group, I've been praying for what it looks like to be kingdom-minded uh, as a stay-at-home dad, what it looked like, what opportunities or platforms did I have to help others engage in the church or engage in God and engage in the gospel. And, and because of those prayers, it kind of flipped my mentality around. I wasn't praying P-R-E-Y -E on the group anymore. I was praying for the group. And I was able to, um, yeah, just, just pray for the group that things would happen within this group. And the opportunity came up because I saw somebody create something um, just so they could, they could give it away on buy nothing. And that sparked an interest in me. What if we flipped this mentality of giving and hoard, or, or hoarding into a mentality of just generous giving and blessings? So I started to uh, uh, plan what I was going to do. And, and, and I had an idea. Because I, would print these, I printed these custom nightlights for our friends when we visited LA and we gave them as gifts. And these are little, little, little itty bitty things with a with whatever picture you want on there. And when you plug it in and it lights up, it basically lights up a picture of, of whatever picture you wanted. So I can put whatever, I can turn any picture into a 3D, in a 3D printed nightlight. So I offered it, uh, first time I offered it, I offered five just for a trial run, you know, like a soft opening business thing. And with every single nightlight, I decided that I would attach a, my story of how I met Jesus. Uh, I called it Let Love Shine. That's, that's the basis of why I'm doing the nightlight, let love shine. And I attach how even in my brokenness, Jesus met me there, and it gave me joy, and that's why I'm printing these things and giving them out. So what started out as a tiny little test trial actually grew to a demand I wish I could, I could fulfill, I can, I can meet. Uh, I realized I had a platform not only to print nightlights to bless people, but to change the culture of this group and to promote community, love, and joy within this group. I was actually blown away because every time I, I, I post a, a nightlight giveaway, um, I would ask them to share something about themselves. And 
and just to create conversation and, and, and community. And I, I was blown away by what people were sharing. People were sharing deep hurts on a public forum uh, within, within this buy nothing group where people just share how, how, how hurt they were uh, about their, or about their uh, miscarriages, about the people they've lost in their lives, about the, 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 the cancer that they have and that how they're struggling. And, and, and the platform allowed me to speak into their life as I replied to them. And, it, and a lot of people would thank, 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 kind of the, can't thank kind of me, I guess, um, for allowing them a platform to even have a voice. So that really got to me, and I got to chat with a lot of strangers as I selected and, 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 and printed out these lines. Like I would chat with them in the, in the background and actually be able to share, share some encouragement with them. So through the messaging, I was able to encourage this community, and some have even reached out, oh, we just, we just love what you're doing. Can I, can, I, can I send you some filament? Can I send you some nightlight so that you can continue to do this? And, and I got to share openly with them like why I do what I do. I'm a Christian, I love Jesus. And, and because I love Jesus, I want everybody to know and find Jesus so that they can have this joy as well uh, it, it, that I have. And they, even though they weren't Christians, they were like, oh yeah, that's, that's great. And so they, sent us, so they sent me night lights and sent me filament so I can continue to do this. 150 night lights later, I printed 150 of these. Um, I don't know where this is going to end. I don't know when the season is going to end. Um, I'll, I, I, said, I told the group I'll try to print it as long as there's, there's, one, there's desire for it. Um, 150 night lights. Each, each one of these night lights, you would think it's this small, but 3D printers are really slow if you've ever had one. Uh, each one of these little night lights takes three hours to print. <laughs> So I've invested a lot of time in here, but I, I've also gained a lot of joy in seeing people's lives change and just the appreciation that they have um, of, of a picture of their, loss, or of their loved one that they lost, sh literally and figuratively shining upon them. And that's what they share with me. And yeah, I don't know when this journey is gonna end, but actually I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm actually gonna be printing another batch tonight. Uh, but or offering to print another batch tonight. One of the admins in this Buy Nothing group happens to be Christian, and she would always joke with me, hey, you're the unofficial pastor of the Buy Nothing group. And I would laugh, I would always laugh, but then deep down, I was truly thankful for God allowing me the opportunity and the platform to make a difference and to share the gospel. Um, one I didn't, one, I, one I've been praying for really as a stay-at-home dad and being kingdom-minded, when I didn't know that, you know, how it would end up. But in all, serious, all seriousness, all of them say no one is immune to falling into conformity, but we all are able to resist it, not by our own power, but through the Holy Spirit, by the renewing of our minds, we're able to battle this daily. I get up every morning, I wake up every morning, I pray to God that he would reveal to me fresh the depths of his love and grace for me, that I wouldn't just know it, but that I would feel it to the depths of my being and that his spirit would empower me to hang on to that truth and his word just for that day. There are many failed days, but that's okay because I'm on a journey just like every one of us are, is on a journey and there's room for grace and tomorrow is a new day. With the correct heart posture, we are able to uh, we, oh, with the heart posture, we have the freedom to engage others knowing you are in God's will. You have the freedom to engage others, knowing you're in God's will. Romans 12, 2, verse B. Then you, will be able, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. This clause hinges on the previous one, which primarily focuses on not conforming to the world, but by renewing our minds constantly on the things of God. Specifically, I would like to add, in light of verse 1, right, um, knowing and understanding completely the mercies of God so that we can uh, be living sacrifices in worship of God. With the right heart posture, we are able to, um, we are able to um, have the engaged culture with the, free, with the freedom. 
when I read this, when I originally read this passage, a lot of times I would think, I would, when, or when I was younger, I would think, wow, I need to find out what God's will for my life is, and I'm going to work as hard as I can towards that goal. And almost, almost as a duty, because that, in a sense, is easier, because I can just do it and complete the task. But as I've gotten older and, 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 and hopefully wiser, I've realized that this isn't talking about finding out what God's will ultimate end for my, or, or for my life is or my goal is. But this is actually daily finding out and discovering that you have the freedom to live out God's will for you because he's already told you what it is to make disciples and to love other people around you. God's will for me and, and working towards that goal, not just a duty, which is what I thought for a long time and almost easier in a sense because I could just do it. It's having the right heart posture and having the freedom to act and decide, knowing you are in God's will. Not necessarily a duty to do, but a freedom to choose. This idea was, was very hard for me to grasp. I think it's a, it's a hard idea because we... We are driven by goals. Uh, we want to know what's, what the end is, and we want to work towards that goal. Uh, and, and, but a lot of times, I realize that when I, when I have that mindset, I'm driven by my own sense of duty. I, and when I achieve an accomplishment, I, I end up with all the, all the accolades as opposed to God. And I've realized that, and I realized that my driving force a lot of times is wrong. It's driven by my own motives as opposed to God's grace in my life. I would like to try to illustrate this freedom, but this freedom is, is very hard to illustrate, I feel. At least it was hard for me. And I think children illustrate this best. When you give a child a blank piece of paper, when you give them a blank piece of paper and you ask them to draw something, they will just draw a three-legged creature with the tail, two eyes, and a long neck, and call it, call it alephalic. That's what Wyatt, my four, five-year-old, did. And if you give them another piece of paper, they'll happily just draw something else completely different from their imagination and their sense of innocence. They create from nothing and able to, is able to draw something. And their imagination just runs wild. On the flip side, if you give this piece of paper to an adult and you ask them to draw something, they will react a little differently most of the time. They will think, oh, what should I draw? They might even ask you questions on, what do you want me to draw? And then they'll wonder if they drew something, if you would understand. Then they'll think about, if I draw something, are you going to psychoanalyze me or something? Like try to figure out who I am? And then they will worry that you can't decipher what they're drawing because they are bad at art. And then they contemplate for one whole minute and they come back and ask you, why do you want me to draw something? And that's kind of the idea, right? We, we get trapped in a lot of roles and rules. And as adults, it's hard for us to just exercise that freedom uh, freely. Adulting can be hard. Responsibility trumps imagination and freedom at times. We live within the confines of these rules and social norms. None of these are bad. But when, when was the last time you had complete freedom to choose to do whatever you wish? It's probably been a while. We don't live in a bubble where we, own, we, where we only concern ourselves. If we move to the middle of nowhere, we might have a little more freedom. But even then, we still have to operate based on nature. Winds, rains, and stuff like that. I don't know if in your life you've encountered a moment I like to call these moments, um, I was made for this moment. <laughs> it's funny. Sorry. My, my humor is not your humor, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, um, I was made for these moment moments where you, where you get a complete sense that this is exactly where God wanted you to be, exactly what God wanted you to do, and exactly how God wanted you to feel because he was literally right next to you. I love those moments because it reminds me that he's right next to me. He's never left me.
I've been a Christian for a big chunk of my life. But it hasn't been until recently that I learned to stop asking the question of what I should be doing and who am I supposed to be, but resting in my identity as a child of God and resting in his grace, not seeking to please anyone or worrying about how others look at me, but being in the audience of one. Not worrying about the things of the world, knowing that the time on earth here is short in comparison to eternity with God. Not worrying about whether you made the right decision, but knowing deeply that my decision cannot throw off God's plan and that he is complete control. Not having to hide my brokenness because I know that my standing with God is not based on what I am doing or what I did or what I'm doing, but what God has done for me. As I sit more and more in reflection of God's grace, I realize that it's not about what I do, but where my heart is that matters. That it isn't about doing, but about being in the presence of God but that my actions would ultimately reflect the posture of my heart. Having the right posture in the heart will reflect through our actions. That God blesses us with the freedom to choose. That we have the choice, we have the freedom to choose how we interact with people, uh, with the people around us, how we choose to, uh, the freedom to choose even in, in every aspect of who you interact with. Uh, I, used to, I used to shy away from a lot of stuff um, because I felt like that was bad. I remember playing uh, vivi- video games online, uh, mobile video games online, and I was like, oh, I, maybe I shouldn't be playing this. But I was so like, addicted to it, I was playing it all the time. But then God always somehow graciously snaps me out of it. And, and I go from trying to rank high on the, on the ranking board to uh, interacting with my team members and getting to know who they are. The shift in heart allows me to invest in people as, a, as opposed to just playing the game. And the game just becomes a platform for the gospel to be spread. And I remember playing this, this game called The Walking Dead and meeting a, 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 a nurse who was studying to be a nurse in Greece, somebody in Germany that was a construction worker, uh, a, a lady, uh, a, a girl that was playing this game and had this, she had the her most horrendous disease all of a sudden hit her and her foot swo- swelled up like this big, uh, something like ele- elephantitis or whatever it is. Uh, but it swelled up and, and, and she was like, she couldn't go to the emerg- urgent care because no, what, nothing was open at that time somehow. And she was just scared. And I remember like, I was just chatting with her. I was like, oh, I can pray for you. Send me a picture. I'll ask my wife. She says, just ice it until the thing opens and then you can go there. And then she thanked me afterwards. I was like, oh, thank you. Like, I couldn't find anybody to talk to. And she was literally playing this game for some reason with her big foot. And, 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 but I was there to speak to her in her life because I cared more about her as a person than I did the rankings on the board. I was, I was number eight on the board, just so you know. <laughs> I was pretty high. But, that, but when God snapped that button, I, I, I just, eventually I stopped playing the game because, you know, come back to reality. But at that time when I was there playing that game, I was able to connect with people. And that's what matters a lot of times. Let me be clear. Uh, my heart is not always in this space. Um, none of us can always be in this space. But as I ponder more about God's extraordinary grace, extraordinary grace, I find myself more and more in this space. As I find myself more and more in this space, I find my actions are more intentional and aligned with God's kingdom. I still very much am broken, as all of us are. And I continue on this journey, but that's okay, because there's room for grace. And tomorrow is a new day. And I'd like to conclude with this. Grace... As soon as the lion passes, we will conclude with this. Grace give us, gives us blessings we don't deserve, so we will know God in ways we can't deny. I'm going to read it again. Grace gives us blessings we don't deserve, so we will know God in ways we can't deny. I just love that because it's something not on ourselves. It's something that God does for us but we can't deny it because he just continues to give us grace. I didn't share what I shared today because that's what you're supposed to feel. I don't want you to feel shame or guilt leaving this place. I don't want anyone to feel like they failed 
If God is speaking to you through the Spirit, I would encourage you to dwell on it, to make space for it. Don't worry about where you're going for lunch. Don't worry about the line passing the church. Don't worry about the rest of the day. We are, all each, on, we are each on our own journey of discovery, of finding out what God is doing in our lives. I share what I share because I can only testify to God's grace in my life personally. He has shown me he has shown all of us extraordinary grace. May we reflect upon it so that the right heart posture, with the right heart posture, we have the freedom to engage culture in a meaningful way. We are all ordinary people, but we have a God who gives extraordinary grace. May we leave these walls knowing and holding on to this truth. I believe if we do, we will already be in the right heart posture to engage the culture around us. It's not something dramatic you need to change. It's just recognizing that there's grace in your life and that grace brings joy and you can't help but share it with other people. Let's pray. Father, we just, we come before you as, as broken vessels that you've made complete, that you've made whole. We lay all these things down at your feet, knowing that you are the one who graciously forgives us and blesses us in spite of us not deserving it. And you continue to remind us of your grace daily. Father, we just pray that you would break our walls down so we would recognize that daily, that, we would, that the things and the busyness of this world and the conformity of the world will not, um, will not interfere with our focus on you, that we will run the race with our eyes fixed on you. And we pray that you will continue to speak to us as we are here with open hearts to listen. We thank you for just always giving us grace, even in our brokenness. And we thank you for being with us, and we thank you for uh, loving us and telling us and allowing us to feel and, ex and, and see it in our daily lives. And we pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. What refreshing words this morning. I, I just felt like the Holy Spirit just... Calgon, take me away. There was a commercial, if you remember, where you can just, like, go back in and fall into a pool of refreshment. And that was just so encouraging to know that it's, uh, it's God who is at work in us. We don't have to strive for it. Well, with that, those thoughts, let's sing the song, Yet Not I, But Christ in me.
follow Jesus, for he has said that he will bring me home. And day by day, I know he will renew me, until I stand with joy.
All right, we have a few announcements. Um, uh, just so you can see that up there, a few upcoming events. On March 4th, there is a women's retreat, um, which I don't actually have all the details for. Uh, is it going to be, uh, oh, so Susanna has all the details if you're, oh. Oh, they'll be sharing an IBF. All right. Remember, I'm not supposed to be here today, okay? No. All right, so there's a women's retreat. On uh, March 12th, there will be the uh, Nepal uh, short-term missions team send-off uh, and sharing during IBF. April 7th will be our Good Friday, and we are going to be having a Good Friday service this year. It's going to be on April 7th, and it will be here at CIBC. I know it's been a while, uh, but uh, it'll be good to have a, uh, a joint uh, Good Friday service as well, and April 9th will be Easter. Oh, can I get the next slide? I don't have the clicker with me. Um, the, the, your tax statements, you should be able to get them uh, today uh, if you haven't picked them up yet, and they'll be available. Uh, if we can continue on, are there? Uh, yes, the flower calendar sign-up is still available in the foyer. If you uh, are interested, and there are still a number of dates available for you to sign up, and uh, I have one last special announcement. Today will be the installation of our 2023 uh, CIBC Council. And to introduce the council, I'm going to invite Calvert. Up. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, today I'm uh, really privileged to uh, Bring, for you, uh, bring before you your elected uh, 2023 council member, uh, council leaders, as well as the uh, board of trustees. And then we also, for, only for this session, only for this worship session, I'm gonna also introduce you the English uh, ministry uh, leaders. But before I bring them up, I just want to uh, share with you, I just want to share my greatest appreciation um, for each of these individuals, because a lot of these individuals were kind of uh, were also serving as last year's um, you know council and uh, board trustees, as well as the uh, ministry leaders, and I just want to express them uh, for you know their time and their effort, not only to not only to uh, serve our Lord, but to serve the church family. So um, again, my really great appreciation for you guys. So without further ado, um, as I am going to introduce to you the uh, 2023 council, um, I want you guys to uh, please uh, come on up as I, as I uh, bring up your name. Okay, um, again, my name is Calvert G. I'm your uh, 2023 council chairperson. And uh, right now, at this time, we don't have a vice chair. Um, so if you have any interest, um, you know, please uh, come up and uh, talk to me. Uh, so uh, right now, so, uh, uh, so our secretary uh, is um, uh, Brother Alan Yee. And then our finance chair is uh, Brother Chris Fong. Our missing chair is uh, Kang Kyo Yu. Our information technology chair is Samuel Ho. Unfortunately, Samuel is not going to join us. Um, he's uh, out of town this weekend. Our uh, maintenance chairperson is uh, Philip Fang. I'm not sure if Philip Fang's here today. Um, and the, uh, our audio chair is uh, Jenkin Huey. And our transportation chair is uh, Lawrence Mui, but I don't, I'm not sure if I see him today. Huh? He's a beginner. Oh, he's a beginner. Search. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, so, um, and then for board trustees, uh, we have uh, David Ewan. And then, um, and then we also have uh, Stanley Fong. And then this year, my understanding is that our, our, the uh, chair for, the, uh, for this year's board trustee would be uh, Ben Tang. And then, uh, and then Wilson Young. Um, Wilson kind of, uh, kind of trained me a little bit about uh, what council chair was like. So, um, so I'm kind of glad that Wilson has, has come on board as the uh, board trustee. And the last one is, uh, uh, is uh, Brother Tom. Uh, Tom is uh, currently um, out of the country and he'll hopefully be back uh, with us in February. Okay, and then for the uh, ministry leaders, uh, we have caring leaders, um, Jeanette Fong. Why don't you come up, Jeanette? And uh, Brenda Tinsma. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Great, thanks a lot, Deacon Ken. Okay, our uh, Christian ed adult leader would be Deacon Gary. 
And then for the, uh, uh, for the uh, Christian uh, children's leaders, uh, not only are they serving uh, for the English congregation, but they're also serving for the uh, Cantonese congregation. That would be uh, Deacon uh, Sheldon and Deacon Hua. And then um, the hospitality and ushering leader, um, again, is uh, Stanley Fong. He's doing not only double duty, maybe triple duty. And then uh, currently our outreach leader, there's a vacancy uh, for outreach leader. Uh, worship coordinator would be uh, Eric Arneson. Wherever he is. Okay, I'll back on my phone. Okay, and then, the, uh, and then uh, for auxiliary uh, fellowship for the English side, um, we do have a vacancy. I'm going to also share with you uh, the uh, leaders for the uh, other congregation. Uh, they're not going to be with us because they're serving, uh, they're serving in their uh, respective congregation, um, either in Sunday school or other ministries. So I'm going to just kind of read off the names. For the caring ministry would be um, Becky Marr. Uh, for the English, uh, Ed, uh, the adult would be um, Derek Chan. Again, for the Christian Ed, for the children, uh, again, uh, for the Cantonese are Deacon Sheldon, Deacon Hua. For the music and the worship, uh, it will be uh, Winston Khan. Winsey, I'm sorry. Uh, for, uh, for evangelism, again, would be our sister, uh, Kankio. And then um, ushering, there's uh, currently, um, um, you know, uh, uh, there's a vacancy. And then for the Mandarin ministry leaders, uh, the caring would be uh, Rachel Lai. And the hospitality and the ushering uh, would, would be uh, Nellie Chan. And finally, uh, the core group for the uh, Mandarin ministry. Um, there are several up there. Uh, Vincent Kwan, his wife Shulan, uh, Rachel Lai, Jay Zhu, uh, and then uh, Deacon uh, Ming, Deacon Godwin Mock, and then um, last but not least, uh, Deacon Emeritus uh, William Lau. So again, uh, this is your 2023 leaders. Uh, we thank you for your prayers and we continue to cover your prayers as uh, we face on the challenges that we brought on for the year 2023. So, um, so, that's, so that's your council for this year. Actually, before I, I close this time and ask the Lord's blessing upon our council, let's give him a big hand for, for serving. <laughs> and I do want to kind of give a shout out to Calvert. Um, he's done an amazing job being the council chairman. And I don't know if you do this. He, he pulls double duty. He, uh, he even attends our deacons and our, our leadership board meetings as well, just so he stays on top of things and knows what's going on. So we're really grateful for Calvert's uh, dedication. Uh, with that, uh, let me say a prayer uh, for our, our council this year, and our board of trustees, and all the ministry leaders, as well as uh, our, our benediction for uh, today's service. Let's, let's pray. Father God, Lord, we know that uh, it, it takes a lot of effort, of, of coordination, of planning uh, for a church to, to run and to operate. Lord, and we are grateful that you have raised uh, just these dedicated men and women who are uh, serving in so many different areas in, in our council and in different ministries uh, this year. Lord, as we can see, there are many who wear different hats and who hold multiple roles. And Lord, we also realize that there are uh, a few vacancies in some uh, vital areas that need filling. Lord, uh, as we even consider all these, though, we are grateful Lord, that it is you who, are, who is building this church. Lord, it is not up to us, any one individual. It is not up to our own individual giftedness or talents, although you have greatly blessed us in those areas. Lord, this is ultimately your church. And we know that the church uh, is not the building here in Oakland, but the church uh, are, is made up of the people here, uh, of every individual brother and sister. So, Lord, even though uh, our, our, our brothers and sisters here oversee so many vital areas uh, that have to do with the physical running of the church, we know that there is a spiritual component to all that we do. So, Lord, I pray that you will, first and foremost, help our brothers and sisters here 
to be exemplary believers in their faith. Lord, even as they uh, use their talents for ministry, Lord, may you help them to be walking with you. May you help them to be uh, great leaders amongst their families, and, uh, and may you help them to uh, just have a love for you that compels them to serve. Lord, we do pray that you will sustain them through this year. Lord, we know that we face many challenges, and there's always surprises that come up. So, Lord, may you give them the wisdom and grace and discernment to handle each new challenge uh, well and for your glory. Lord, most of all, we continue to lift up our church. Lord, that even as we are recovering from COVID, we will not forget the call that no matter what role we have, big or small, Lord, we are called to love others and to make disciples and to take advantage of every opportunity we have before us. So, Lord, we thank you for uh, the, the reminder from your word. And now may you go with us as we go forth into this world to engage with the culture, engage with the people you bring our way, and most of all, to be ambassadors for Christ and to be messengers of the great gospel that we share, Lord. So it is in our, our uh, Savior's mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, God bless you. We'll see you in IBF. And thank you to our uh, council members.